Jim, last week we announced the news that you'd signed a new contract with the club. First of all, congratulations. Can you just talk us through some of the deciding factors from your own perspective? Um, yeah, I mean, look, it was a relatively straightforward decision uh, from my point of view. Um, you know, the conversation had been ongoing for a couple of months, obviously, you know, going into the the latter stages of my uh, original contract, you know, those negotiations were um, were very straightforward as far as I'm concerned, and it was uh, a no-brainer to extend my stay. I've loved my time at the club, um, you know, got great backing from the board. I've got a brilliant backroom team here behind me, and uh, we've had a really positive start, and you know, we hope to to build on that. You talk about that trust from the board and the chairman. How much easier does that make your own job? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, look. Those relationships between um, you know the owner and the chief executive in particular, they're the two probably main guys on the board that I um, you know that I have regular dialogue with. Um, but of course, you need the, the support from the rest of the board as well to uh, for them to agree with what we're trying to do. So um, yeah, I mean it's you know it's good for your confidence, I suppose, as a young manager that the the owner and the chief executive believe in you. Um, and I think we've worked really well together, and we're just continuing to. To develop those relationships, you know, it's um, it's one based on trust. Obviously, they've got to uh, believe in what we're doing in terms of the football department, and I think um, you know the results that we've had up to now would suggest that um, that you know things are ticking along nicely. Yeah, the backing that you received in the, the summer as well, 13 new players coming in, that's indicative of the the faith that they've got in you to go and put a squad together that will be competitive. Yeah, I mean, look, obviously. Um, you know, recruitment is such a, a key role at any club and um, we do spend a, a hell of a lot of time discussing that and, you know, I think the um, the introduction of Michael Kearney into the into the scouting department as well has made a significant difference. Um, you know, came with a, a really good database already built up from, from previous roles and, um, and yeah, I think we've utilised that, that brilliantly. You know, myself and Michael have uh, regular conversation about the the areas that we need to to look at strengthening in the in the future, but of course you know that summer there was as big a, a turnover of players as what I've had in, in any of my previous jobs, and we knew how important it was going to be to get that right. And um, you know the level of scrutiny that we go into with the players, and um, you know Michael watching them live. I do a lot of work on online on on Y Scout on one of the platforms that we use to to recruit, and um, you know between us then we we hopefully, more often than not, make the right decision. It's quite a high turnover in players, but do you quite enjoy that process of putting a squad together like that? Yeah, I love it personally. I mean, I spend uh, a lot of my afternoons in my office is basically, um, you know, looking at Michael's player reports and then uh, spending hours watching uh, previous games from those players that he recommends. You know, we don't always agree which I think is uh, is healthy um, and you know ultimately you know I've got the final say in in what players we decide to bring to the club but I certainly wouldn't be able to uh, do the the kind of recruitment that we've done in the summer without um, the support of Michael and and obviously you know the chief executive Luigi to to go and get the deals done yeah is it nice to have someone to do a wee bit of the, the leg work in the background uh, yeah I mean definitely look Luigi does the negotiating with the agents and the stuff that managers don't want to be dealing with um, and then you know Michael identifies the players and gives me uh, a list of players for each position and then it's up to me to to try and pick the right player that fits within, uh, you know, obviously budget, um, you know, the style of play, uh, to the kind of good positive culture that we're trying to create here at the club. Um, so a lot of fine detail is, is gone into before we commit to players. And, you know, I think looking at the business that we've done in the summer, given we've brought in 13 new faces, every single one of them is... is um, has lived up to that expectation that we put on them. Yeah, did you expect them to gel so quickly? You're always apprehensive and slightly nervous about uh, bringing that many players, especially you know different nationalities from different um, uh, different leagues all around Europe that are sometimes played at a completely different tempo to that of the Scottish game. So yeah, I mean it, there is a, a certain level of. Um, of unknown about how these guys are going to adapt to the Scottish game, but you know I, I couldn't be any happier with what we've done, and um, you know the players that we held on to as well in the summer um, have played a real key role in that as well. Do you think that's about signing the right characters as well as the right footballs? Well, you've got to do all the 
you know, the relevant background checks on people and try and get references from people who have worked with them closely. And, um, you know, I have built up a, a good network of contacts in Eastern Europe. So I've got people that I can pick up the phone to that would give me an honest opinion on the people that we identify. And Michael is, himself has got, you know, a good uh, network as well. So between us, we do uh, get as many references as we can about the personality and the type of character that they're going to be because it's easy to watch a game of football and see if someone is a good player or not um, but you know to, to find out a little bit more in depth about the actual personality is the hardest part and um, you know the guys that have came have have, uh, have settled into life in Scotland so so well and that's not just about you know me in the backroom team either it's and, and even the players that are here it's there's a lot of guys behind the scenes you know that um, do a lot of uh, work in making sure that the players find the right accommodation making sure their families are uh, get over here and, and you know you're talking about schools and nurseries and everything else so all of that has to to fall into place because if the, the players wives and girlfriends and kids aren't happy then um, ultimately it can have an impact on their performances on the pitch. I've heard you speak a few times about that network that you've built up in Eastern Europe so I'm just quite interested how and when did you start building that up? Uh, just gradually over time I mean obviously agents send players um, constantly uh, you know to, to me um, all throughout the course of the season and you know there's some agents then that you do um, you know, if you've done a bit of business with them in the past and the player has been a success, then of course these are the, the, the guys that you want to deal with in the future. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just a gradual process. I, I suppose it's just like any other industry, really, you know, where you, you do a bit of good business with someone, uh, you get a good feel for them. There, there's a, a sense of trust there on both sides. And, um, yeah, I think it's important to, to utilise those different relationships all over the place. When you look at the team, that you've built throughout the summer when you look at them on the park does it embody what you stand for as a manager can you see a, a Jim Goodwin team well you know I, I think ultimately as a manager you, you want a team of individuals that are are together um, you know that have generated a good spirit that you know when they cross that white line they're going to give you a hundred percent commitment and effort uh, regardless of what's happening th throughout the game um, you know they need to have that aggressiveness and that determination um, but of course you know I, I want to sign good technical you know quality players as well and I think we've done that uh, I think we've got the balance right uh, throughout the team a lot of the time this season um, and I, I think what pleases me as well is the fact that you know the team has been able to come from behind on numerous occasions this season already um, to gain positive results and you know that was always my mindset as a player and and now as a manager is that you know never giving up never say die attitude and I'm delighted to see that that's the kind of character traits that we've got within the squad as well. As a player I'm sure you won't mind me saying as well you were quite streetwise and that's reflected in the team as well isn't it? Uh, well I hope so I mean obviously you know, I, I wouldn't be remembered for uh, technical ability or goal scoring attributes or anything like that. But I would like to think that most of my uh, teammates um, and managers that I, that I haven't fell out with uh, over the course of my, my career would say that I was a good teammate. That, you know, they knew I had their back and you, they knew that I was going to give everything for the jersey. And, um, and yeah, I, I think you, you need that. And, and as I said, it's about getting the balance right. It's about having, you know, guys like a Declan Gallagher for argument's sake or a, a Ross Doherty uh, you know a Louis Mould guys that have uh, been around the block a few times that know what they, you know know how to win games when things aren't going particularly well they know how to grind out a result they're good leaders on the pitch and within the dressing room as well um, and then of course you have to have you know good technical attributes throughout the team as well I think you see that with you know the likes of Babunski and Trapanovsky that we brought in and um, you know Dalby as well at the top end of the pitch scoring goals so it's uh, as I said to you it's the hardest thing in the game is to get all of those key uh, decisions right in terms of um, the personnel but uh, I think up to now we've uh, we've made a decent task of it. That metal and determination that you're talking about, it must be so pleasing to, to have that now, considering when you came to the club, that was maybe one of the things that we could be criticised for that, that season we were a wee bit of a, a pushover, but we've managed to, to turn that round really quickly. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I, I think that's credit to the 
to the backroom team um, as well for you know driving the standards on a on a daily basis. You know, it's, it's not just my voice all the time. You've got guys like Dave Bowman, Paul Mathers with the goalkeepers. You know, Sharpie, uh, my assistant, um, that are continuously trying to you know push the players and motivate them, and then. You need to have players with those traits within the group as well because we're not in the dressing room all the time um, and you need the senior players and the more experienced leaders of the group to to really drive the high standards and you know that's what it boils down to you know a lot of the time you know you can't play brilliantly in every game and there's been games where we've played well and then there's been other games that we probably haven't clicked as well as what we would have liked but we've still managed to to grind out an ugly result and you know sometimes that's what it takes and um, and I think we've we've done that really well we know we need to improve uh, we're continuously trying to get better every day in training and then every day when we play at a match day um, but when all those things don't click and don't come together it's great for me to know that if the going gets tough and it becomes a battle and a dogfight, like it does against you know some teams in this league, that's what they're all about. It's nice to know that we're not a soft touch and that we're going to be uh, walked over. And um, you know, as I said, I think we've had to find those um, physical attributes a lot this season, and that's why you know we've managed to pick up so many positive results. Is that then the culture that you're looking to build here? Is what you're speaking about there about the determination and the, the never giving in? Is that the kind of culture? that you feel bring us long-term success here? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the lads know, you know, they know me by now, um, you know, having worked together for for a, a considerable period of time, they know what I'm all about, you know, we, we don't accept, um, you know, guys being half-hearted in training, we want them to train the way that they play, we want that level of aggression without anybody getting hurt or injured, but we, we need to train that way in order to allow ourselves to play that way, and... Um, yeah, I think we've uh, you know we've done really really well at certain points in the season. Um, still a long way away from where we think we're capable of being. I think we have made gradual improvements month to month, and um, as I said, I still think there's more to come from from this group. And I think you know we've got some really good young players as well that are you know coming through the system that are um, pushing those senior players as well. And I think it's great for those experienced ones to be looking over their shoulder every now and again and thinking that these younger ones are on their coattails and desperate to take them out of the team. So I think all of that pushes people and it gets the best out of players. You mentioned him earlier but he's a really important part of the backroom team is, is Dave Bowman and how nice is it for those younger players who've come through the academy to have a familiar face when they, they come into the first team set up of Dave? Yeah, I mean, look, Dave's been here a long time, obviously, and uh, you know had a brilliant playing career himself. Uh, was heavily involved with the youth academy um, over the years, and um, you know he spends a lot of time after training with these younger players, working on their weaknesses, um, which is which is brilliant. And you know the young lads really appreciate that time and that effort that he gives to them. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I, I didn't know Bo a, a great deal prior to coming. I, I you know, I knew all about him when uh, he was a player, and I've um, uh, I've had a few little running battles with him on the sidelines over the years, and I was wasn't particularly sure how me and him were going to uh, to gel when I came in because I think we're quite similar characters in a lot of ways. You know, we put high demands on people, we expect people to give their all every day and um, I'm delighted to say that, you know, we developed a really good friendship, I think, over the last couple of years. Um, I respect, you know, what he what he what he says in terms of the contributions that he makes in staff meetings and uh, his opinions on how the teams perform. He's quite honest and I think it's important for any young manager to surround themselves with good experienced coaches that you know aren't going to be yes men that aren't just going to tell you what you want to hear every now and again they're going to challenge you and they're going to you know give you an honest assessment of what they see and um, I think that's really really crucial for um, for me as a manager as well but for for us as a staff to, for those to for those guys to recognize that they can they can be brutally honest at times you know and um, and I think it, it, it helps us in, in going forward and making sure we don't make the same mistakes and uh, and trying to improve. Yeah, it sounds like you still feel those areas where you can develop as a manager. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, look, I'm still relatively young in terms of, uh, you know, managers. I mean, I'm 42 and, um, you know, I've had, I think it's eight years now um, out, out of playing the game and continuously trying to learn, you know, read a lot of books. I... Um, 
listen to a lot of interviews from other managers, always trying to pick up new ideas, new ways of training, trying to you know stay on top of what the next you know modern thing looks like. I think is really important. Um, but yeah, I mean, you need, as I said, you need to surround yourself with good people um, and good players, and and they kind of help you develop as well. It would be remiss not to, to mention Lee Sharp, who's been your, your right hand man for a few years now. Yeah, I mean, Sharp has been with me since since my Alloa days. Um, you know, it, it's important in this game as well that you have people around you that you can trust and that you can rely on. And you know, when uh, things are going well, everybody's in a good place. But when uh, you know when things don't go so well, which can happen very often in this game, you know, it's important that you've got good support there around you. And um, myself and Sharpie have worked well together over the years. Really, really important figure uh, in the backroom team. The players respect him. He's got great relationships with all of them as well. And um, and yeah, hopefully that will continue for many years to come. You were speaking earlier about how you feel there's a lot more to come from the group. So where do you see those development points going forward in the next few months? Well, I, th I think from uh, where we were at the start of the season um, to where we are now, I think there's a lot more confidence in the group. I think there's a lot more belief as well um, on a team level but also on an individual basis. We had a lot of players at the start of the campaign that have never played in the Scottish Premiership before. Um, you know, both the Scottish players that we brought in and obviously those guys that we brought in from abroad. But I think there can sometimes be an apprehension when you're used to playing the league below about whether you can handle that next step up. And, um, you know, the players soon realised that they were more than capable of playing at this level. And I think they've shown it. I think they've shown it consistently. But, um, you know, we, we need to improve in the forward areas. We need to get a bit more uh, fluidity to our build-up play. We need to add a bit more pace to our game. Uh, defensively, I think we've been really well organised and solid and we've got you know one of the best defensive records in the league. But, um, you know, there's always opportunities to improve different areas you know we need to try and continue to in improve the individuals as well within the squad and spending time with them in 1v1s is um, is key but as a team I still think there's a lot more to come I don't think we've had the full squad together for you know a, a, a significant period of time now and I think that's going to be really important for us going into the busy Christmas schedule that we have we need to get some of these guys out of the medical room and back onto the pitch and you know still create that um, that healthy competition for places in the team because at the moment we've had to rely on you know certain individuals too much and you know fatigue can set in when you don't have the, the possibility to change it. Do you think the, the last couple of weeks where we've had three or four games in, in quite a short space of time has been a good taster for some of the players of what this Christmas schedule is going to be like? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, when we go into the Christmas schedule, we've got, I think, seven games in, in three weeks um, and it's going to be, you know, impossible for the same 11 to play those seven games in that period of time. So, um, you know, there's going to be a real requirement on rotation and even if we win a game on a Saturday and we've got a game on a Tuesday, you know, we'll be chopping and changing personnel you know, not purely based on performance, but sometimes, you know, it's my job to try and protect the players and to make sure that they stay available because, you know, that tends to be the crucial period of the season. And um, we have to make sure we go into that with a real freshness within the squad and make sure that we come through it with a, a decent amount of points. Making those those changes and rotations is mainly based on whether you've got trust in the, the players that are coming in and I'm, I'm sure you do because everyone's contributed this season. They, they definitely have, yeah. I mean, um, you know, Jack Walton in goal has obviously been a mainstay but you know, I have to give special mention to, to Dave Richards uh, who's been waiting patiently in the wings and I think that's really important for Jack as well but you know the work that those guys do with Paul Mathers in the goalkeeping department is brilliant and um, you know Jack has been has, has been outstanding for us when called upon this season but um, I think you see how important the squad is given the um, the amount of times the, the team has had to change over the last few months and you know you get players that maybe haven't uh, played for a considerable period of time like you know Vichko Sevelj or Glenn Middleton and then when they do come in you know the team is never weakened they come in and they make a real positive impact uh, Vichko you know in the last game against Ross County I think was probably his best game in a Dundee United jersey um, and as I said I think that's important for for competition you know you can't have any complacency then when you know there's nine guys sitting on the bench and each one of them is 
you know, just as capable as the player that's in the starting eleven. I think that's really, really positive. And like I said as well, you know, we've got young players now coming through the group that uh, are desperate for an opportunity. And um, you know, that keeps everybody on their toes. But in order to have that competition, we need to, you know, avoid picking up injuries, which is the hardest part because you know it happens at every level at every club it doesn't matter you look at some of the top clubs in the in the world everybody suffers injuries and you just hope that they don't all happen at the same time which is unfortunately what's happened to us where we've had four or five key players uh, missing important games but credit to the group that was available we didn't drop too many points during that period you must be delighted as well with the way that the, the players have adapted to the, the new system maybe not so much the the players who weren't here last year because they don't know any different in terms of you as a manager but the boys who were here last year that won the championship playing that system and then we go and change it in the summer that takes a lot of courage for you as a manager to, to go and try something new coming out of the championship well like I said to one of your previous questions I think as a, a young manager you're always looking at new ways of, of you know training different coaching methods I watch uh, a ridiculous amount of football through the season um, from every country and you know, a lot of teams last season in Europe played the 3-4-3 system and it worked brilliantly. You know, it's it's a really positive system, you know, in, in possession, a really positive system where you're playing with a front three and you've got two supporting wing backs. Uh, out of possession, it's a very solid system as well because you can drop into a 5-4-1 uh, with a low block trying to hit teams on the counter. And I think it's worked well, but I think the thing that's probably pleased me the most is that you know, we've got a real flexibility now within the group, which is something I've spoke about continuously from the start of the campaign. Um, yes, we tried to bed in the 3-4-3, but, you know, we've not been afraid to change it to a 3-5-2 at times. There's been periods in certain games where we've had to go to a back four. Um, but that doesn't happen by chance. It's stuff that we... We work on through pre-season, we explain different situations to the players uh, depending on result, depending on opposition and um, you know we have to be able to to change as we go sometimes um, depending on what the opposition does sometimes. So uh, the players have, have been brilliant, they've been really on board with what's been asked of them and I think you need that buy-in from the staff and the players in order to make anything work and um, yeah so it's been very very positive up to date. Yeah you need that buy-in from the fans as well that these things aren't going to happen overnight and they've definitely done that and you can see that with the, the season ticket sales before the campaign started and even now when the, the half season tickets have gone on sale they've been snapped up really quickly. Um, yeah I mean definitely the, the supporters are the you know the, the life and soul of any football club and um, you know it's it's up to me as a manager and the staff and the players to put a, a team on the park that they can be proud of and that they can get behind um, you know I think patience is really important and it's you know not something that people have got a lot of these days uh, in society or in football but you know things don't happen overnight you know we have to uh, understand that sometimes it takes a little bit of time to you know get the team playing uh, a certain way we don't always get it right I don't always get it right certainly uh, we've made some mistakes along the way um, but you know that continuous support from them has been has been really well received from um, the players and from from the staff and, and obviously from myself as well and um, you know I think like any supporter out there you know all they want to see is a team that is given a hundred percent every single game they go out there and I think they can accept mistakes along the way as long as they're honest mistakes and there's a, a real positive reaction off the back of it and I, I can think of numerous times this season where things haven't been going exactly according to plan and maybe we have went behind in games but the positive reaction from the stands um, you know, sometimes really inspires the, the players on the park and, and it helps them. So, yeah, I can't thank the supporters enough. Um, you know, there's going to be ups and downs along the way and there'll be times where they'll be pleased with what I'm doing and there'll be other times, I'm sure, where uh, where they won't be so pleased. But all I can say to them is that the the work that we're doing here behind the scenes is is tireless. It's, um, you know, it's it's not something that we, we take lightly. Um, and... You know, we are very, very grateful to them for for what they've what they've given the team up to now. And um, you know, I've got difficult decisions to make week to week. Everybody's got their own opinion on what the starting eleven should look like, what the substitutions should look like. But you know, all I can say is every decision I make um, is an honest one, and it's for 
the greater good of the team. And um, you know, if we get the positive results off the back of it, then then uh, everyone will be happy. Just looking forward at the, the remainder of the season, it's obviously been a, a really positive start, but how important is it that we, we don't get carried away and get ahead of ourselves and just rem remind ourselves of what the ambitions were that we set at the start of the season? Uh, yeah, I mean, we had a meeting with the players this morning um, just to touch on that particular topic about, you know, obviously it's an international break now, the players will have the weekend off and then we'll come back in next Monday to prepare for a, a difficult game at Ibrox, but... Um, we can't allow ourselves to get complacent, you know, we can't allow ourselves to drop standards. Um, you know, it's been real hard work and effort that's got us to where we are right now. And I've been in the game long enough to know that it can turn very, very quickly if you do get complacent. So I don't believe that'll be the case here. I think we've got too many uh, good people at the club to make sure that we keep driving things. Um, but it's... Um, you know, we've got targets, you know, our first target initially is, as I've said, and it's a really boring answer and it's not one that lacks ambition at all, but it's just a realistic target of let's get enough points to stay in the league. And if we hit that target, then it's a case of, right, where are we in terms of top six? And, um, and then if we hit that one, then of course it's about thinking about Europe. But right now, for me and the players and the staff, it's about accumulating enough points to make sure that Dundee United are a Premiership team next season. And we need to get that stability. We need to get that consistency as well. You know, there's been too many years of up and down the leagues. Um, you know, I think somebody told me a stat last week that I'm the tenth manager in nine years, which is quite scary to think really and I think four or five of those seasons were spent in the championship so I think with me signing the new contract hopefully that brings a bit of stability for the club um, you know hopefully we'll have the next 10-15 years where Dundee United are not only a premiership uh, club during that time but you know a, a genuine top six team consistently and one that's pushing for Europe year on year but that takes time and it's not something that happens overnight and we'll continue to try and improve as we go along and hopefully um, you know make the team capable of doing that type of thing. Yeah you touched on it there, the revolving door industry that football management has become. It's a an increasingly transient business so how nice is it to have that security on a personal level? Um, yeah I mean some people think us managers are off our heads to be in this type of occupation where um, you know one week you're the hero and the next week you're the villain. Um, we see how quickly now managers change at clubs and you know it can be it can be uh, stressful for the families but it's it's not something that I ever think too much of I just I, I believe that uh, you know if you work hard then you'll, you'll get the results and and that's what we're that's what we're doing here and yeah of course security is uh, important especially when you've got a young family but um you know, results will dictate. That's that's the bottom line. You know, I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. I understand that, but it's, you know, it's not a personality contest as far as I'm concerned. You know, I don't, I'm not really bothered about what um, people may think of me on a personal note. Uh, it's about working hard for Dundee United. It's about doing my best for this club, uh, ensuring that you know we get the results that required to make sure that we're successful uh, from one week to the next. And. For as long as I'm the manager, that's what I'll continue to do. Well, I've taken enough of your time. I'm sure you and the, the rest of the staff will take some well-earned rest over the, the international break. So thanks again for your time. Thanks, Alice.